a few things to go through. Uh, standard beginning uh, and meeting agenda items, uh, the number of executive reports. Uh, then we have our constitutional amendments, which we'll go into detail and we'll to, and then we'll have the election and then any other uh, general business. Yeah. Um, so, first, apologies. Uh, Sarah, do we have? Nick Turbo, Francesca Jernison, Jack Skinner, Zina Kerr, Maya Marcus, James Ferguson, and Andrew Jackson. And Jenny Newman, thank you for And Jenny Newman.
useful, uh, especially last night when we had to move all the current service to a new location. So it was just a um, Additionally, we've also had a good year financially. Um, we've actually made a surplus even after not including our winter uh, on the current day event. Um, so we've had all those new members, uh, membership fees, and also taking advantage of the grants um, whenever possible. We saw us um, actually come out ahead at the end of the year, which has been a good sign. Um, yeah, so Proxmox is in the right direction, and yeah, hopefully we'll continue to go forward. I'll uh, hand over to Tom, uh, so we need to turn it over. Okay, carry on. So from a financial perspective, a lot has happened in the last year, like a ridiculous amount. We've had a, a turnover this year of like 25 to 30 k, which is unheard of for the box in the last few years. And several of those managed to be great in the last few years we've seen. And a lot of that was uh, due to a very large event we did at the beginning of the year called Code Today. Uh, we got sponsorship from American Express, and it was huge, and we were completely smashed for those three weeks that we were organising it and leading up to it. But um, without any further fanfare, let's get into it. Um, so we had roughly $28,000 in income, or million in real, and most of that was about 22 of that was from the home today. The rest was from, from interest, software sales, activate grants, more industry sponsorship uh, such as the, um, the programming competition and then a hell of a lot from registrations. Like for a week just then, a couple of weeks ago, what was it? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, something like that, we had $600, $700 sign ups. Um, part of that is because we had increased our membership fee to cover the new events that are happening. Uh, five to ten dollars, um, and also because we've got a comparative ridiculous amount of sales for last year. In terms of expenses, so once again, the biggest item in the expenses was for today. We had to book out um, security for a whole weekend for one building. We had to organise, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner for three days for all the participants. Uh, we had to get prizes, which were the first prize I think was eight dollars. So it was quite, sorry, 5,000. So it was quite um, sizable account. Uh, apart from that, um, most of our events would be run um, with either pretty much broken even or very slight loss. So for example, we had Dead GP and IT, which was a joint event, um, sort of like welcome back to welcome back to semester event, done with the IT, which is the IT society. Um, we were expecting to run a big loss with that one. Uh, thanks to all the sign-ups, we had a very around about seventy dollars per person, which I would say is pretty reasonable. Um, aside from that, um, there's not too much to it. So, yeah, somehow we managed to get more money in this year than we did coming out. So our bank account is now up from about four thousand last year, about five thousand this year. Um, so that can be a problem because as a not-for-profit organisation, we can't have too much money. Um, so <laughs> but um, I do have some advice for next year's treasurer, whatever that may be. So firstly, don't use any cash. You may have noticed if you looked at, if you went to the union and looked at our reaffiliation documentation that we actually have removed all cash from the society and basically it's all pretty personal space. That just stops it from becoming a massive cluster of fun. Let's be honest, it's a, it's a mess otherwise to try and try and keep all the finances together, it just takes forever. So if you just do it by um, 
reimbursement, next is nice and simple. It's on the owners of the person who spent money in the name of Crossbow to have all the documentation together and to get reimbursed. Much simpler. And secondly, keep your book working and your documentation up to date. It's just so much harder for us. Any questions? So you can. Uh, what was what's the balance today and the balance from last AGM? The balance today is. I think it's around 5k. I think I don't know the exact year yeah. from last year, but it's around the back. This year it's around the back. It's still late. Do you have questions, follow us? It's a very good question. Thank you. How long do you think we're going to be there? 
Uh, I'm hoping that we will be there for less than two months. Um, we want absolute time spent. Um, basically, we're going to be there until we find a permanent location for the server uh, with UTS, uh, or that we uh, that we get the table put back to the room. What are you hoping for in permanent location? Permanent location, um, power, network, and that's about it. Is that what you mean? Uh, or? Well, what's your expectation that's going to happen? Oh, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. I'm talking to, uh, I'm talking to the uh, ITD at uh, UTS, and they seem to be on board, so they're not going to be um, So, does that mean building 11 or not building 11? Um, I, I'm not sure where it will be, um, and honestly, from, from <coughs> the way that it runs, it doesn't matter where it is. Um, it could be in the bottom of the down Is that? Oh, um, last question is, uh, what's happened with our IP? Do we still own our IP range? From, from what I understand, nothing's happened. Yep. Um, it's the same situation as it was before. The domains have been... Really? They've been redirected from now, but we can talk to that. Yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah, Chris? Oh, I was just going to say, you might want to clarify that where you're planning to have the server house isn't necessarily the same place as where Proxoft might have oh, the yeah. venue to meet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the server can just sit in the room somewhere, but um, yeah, the, the Proxoft room is uh, independent of that. We should talk about the room. I think that's fine. Um, yeah, any other questions? No? Alright, cool. Thanks for being here. We will miss those updates. And to the rest of the exec for the work we've put in this past year. Um, we'll get to the down of business. Um, we've got quite a few constitutional members to get to, get through. Um, so, we might try and group these up. And if anyone has any opposed uh, uh, to any of these, uh, we can then go back and then we can discuss them. Or uh, we can see what we can do. Is that good? Yeah, we're just going to say that. Oh, we're going to do it. Alright, so we'll start with items uh, 424 and 425. Uh, this is clarification. Oh, that's the whole Okay, cool. All right, 424, clarification of eligibility to vote. Uh, Sarah, do you want to give us the wording of this amendment? So the new version of 424 now states, all members may attend all general meetings of the society. Voting rights extend to all current financial members. Uh, it sounds pretty clear. It's uh, one of these are clarifications because they just not wording in the new current constitution. It's wrong. I don't want to be a pain, but what does it say before? Um, so before it said all members may attend all general meetings, voting rights, etc. So we just added in that all members need current financial members. So you have must be paid. Speak up. Cool. One, two, three, 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 three. So uh, we'll take a quick vote. Uh, all four, say aye. Is anyone else having trouble hearing? Cool. All right. Uh, 425. Uh, added to clarify the annual membership fee payment deadlines. So this is another clarification. Um, do you want to just read out the wording, Sarah, please? 425. So 425 in the new Uh, 
the executive decided in the meeting last week that all people who were members last year um, can vote today as that was uh, the conditions of when they signed up. However, their membership will expire tomorrow. And going forward, uh, membership will be for one year. Is there a pleasure <coughs> on here? Uh, yeah, please. Can we get the microphone over here? Seriously. Membership for the first of February each year with a one month grace period to cover added right, I'm just going to stand here so it's easier. Okay, so does anyone want to go first? I would like to ask a question about the amendment, and that is that why this needs to be codified in the Constitution. I don't see why the terms of membership can't be something that the executive is able to set at will without being set in stone in the Constitution. within the constitution. This is just added to say when when you're not no longer a member what's your part of form one okay. Um, this is to solve we get a lot of questions around oh am I still a member because I signed up at this day but when does it run out? So it sort of gives a hard deadline that everyone knows within the society. Okay, but why does it need to be in the constitution? Uh, because I mean it should be not part of the constitution
Would anyone like this read out, or have they all read it previously? We need to read it out. Okay. Yes. I'll start with 5.7, since 5.6 doesn't make sense without reading 5.7 first. Yeah. Uh, so 5.7, the oath of office is to be appointed at the discretion of the executive committee and removed at the earlier of either removal by the discretion of the executive committee or at the end of the office period of the executive committee. Liaison officers do not hold a position on the executive committee and shall assist and advise the executive committee. 571 liaison, liaison officer positions shall consist of first year officer, alumni officer, competitions officer, and media officer. Uh, 5711 First year officers shall promote the society and its interests at the direction of the executive committee, particularly with the university students at the university. The first year officer shall represent the interests of the first year students within the university. 5712, alumni officer. Shall provide the society and its interest at the direction of the executive committee, particularly within alumni students of the university and the wider industry committee. <coughs> alumni officers shall represent the interest of alumni students within the university. 5713, competition officer shall assist the, the executive committee in the organization and operation of all programming related competitions. Competitions officers shall also make efforts to be aware of external programming related competitions and advise the existence of these competitions to members and act as a coordinator for forming teams to enter competitions. 5714 Media Officer. They shall assist the Executive Committee in the creation of promotional media for the society and its interests at the direction of the Executive Committee. Promotional media includes but is not limited to persons, banners, merchandise, logos, and graphics to be used in the promotion of the society and its interests. 572. The AFA officer appointments must have a majority vote of the executive committee. Notification of appointments to be provided in writing to the secretary. 573. The AFA officer removals at the discretion of the executive committee must have a majority vote of the executive committee. Notification of the intent to remove must be provided in writing to the secretary and the AFA officer in question at least five days before a removal vote is passed by the executive committee. Notification of removal must be provided in writing to the liaison officer. 5731. Liaison officer will have the right of appeal against removal at the discretion of the executive committee. The appeal must be presented in writing to the secretary or the president within 14 days of notification of removal from the executive committee. 574. Persons eligible for appointment must be financial, financial members of the society for the year they are appointed and not occupying an office in the executive committee. 575. Liaison officers are uh, to provide advice to the executive committee and undertake their appointed duties. 576. Liaison officers are eligible to attend meetings of the executive committee at the discretion of the president. 577. Liaison officers are not entitled to vote on the executive committee. And 516. Uh, 516. The executive committee shall review, remove, and add liaison officer appointments from time to time as needed at the discretion of the executive committee, each of which must be agreed upon by a majority of the executive committee. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, it's okay with the questions. Uh, can we read the definition? Or just... uh, they will be uh, the producing things like uh, content for Facebook, uh, images, with not content, but okay, well, things like banners, media, logo. Um, the reason I want this position is because we have some people in the, uh, in the products of membership that have been helping us, and it's a good way of recognizing them. And because there's no real other way or form of really Is that, would you like the other, the official? No, I know what the other one, but they're basically. No, but would you like the official definition? I want the so the media officers shall assist, assist the executive committee in the creation of promotional media for the society and its interests at the direction of the executive committee. Promotional media includes, but is not limited to, posters, banners, merchandise, logos, and graphics to be used in the promotion of the society and its interests. Good. So, okay. Yes, sir. So how about the positions of being removed and being turned into officer positions instead of exec positions? Um, because uh, we hate people on the executive committee, um, we found that there was a lot of uh, disagreement and it was hard to find a clear agreeable solution to a lot of things and it was just a progress um, to better have 
a similar amount of people were responsive for the direction of the but I still have the positions for people, so we're getting the goal for the direction of the site. Can I also add as a logistical nightmare with eight of us having eight points of contact for the union? Uh, they would say, we spoke to person X, but now person Y is dealing with it. There was just too many points of contact as well. We had a lot of trouble trying to get the executive meetings running with eight of us different schedules. Logistic wise, it's not. Yeah,
definition of the competition officer is that they support the executive and uh, there's no structure around they have to do a job. <laughs> Yes, the alternative would be don't adopt uh, the amendments. But if you wanted a project officer to say to do something, how would that go about if that clause didn't stand? So we didn't have this clause uh, at the end of the day, and we did want to elect another officer, but there is no clause around it being an officer. They're not you know, recognised by the Constitution as doing anything on behalf of the society, they're just doing it because we should. So the executive effectively should. Yeah, the wording is that they act the The direction of the executive. So, so you're effectively creating a, a mechanism by which you can delegate a responsibility on society to <laughs> I'd just like to make one more point, and that is that the society right now has a group of people who, uh, in addition to the CSO, are responsible for administering the cuts uh, in computer infrastructure, and the amendment here does not make any reference to that. So, regardless of whether we vote this in or not, we still have an additional uh, group of people playing a role that isn't recognised by this amendment. We're not putting fear for in the Constitution. Uh, that's yeah, that's good feedback, um, and I'll definitely add that to the general business at the end, and I'd like to make that recommendation in the future as well. Um, but the, uh, to point out that this action also would provide a framework where we can implement those as well. So if we were to add, change, one, just add, uh, say, a computer office and assistance office to the list, we've still got the rest of the clauses in there that would define how, how those roles behave. Okay. Um, yeah, one question, why is the CSO not being on there? Uh, the CSO is a key part of the... Why is he not there? Why? Uh, we have three. Why is the CSO more of a key part than, say, the competition's officer? Sorry? Why? Or a media officer? Or a the, the CSO uh, is ongoing. There's ongoing systems and uh, infrastructure and the maintenance in play. Uh, the competitions are... Uh, I consider them personal events, um, which should be recognised by the entire exam as a new for uh, those events during the time and place and then the event finishes. So to put it, yeah, events finish uh, to still to the infrastructure, it's okay. So just to add to in my mind the way you separate between the executive and officers is the executive do the direction of society. Now, computer systems, as Carlin said, is ongoing. We still need to have strategy moving forward, like what Rob was done with the virtualization and all that crap, I don't understand. Um, so, that, I would say because that's strategy driven, that's executive. Whereas something like competitions officer or media officer, that's role driven. We're doing a specific role, such as uh, managing an event or managing media or producing. <coughs> So um, that's how I make that distinction. But isn't the goal of, say, obviously a more particular type of competition in itself a strategy drive? Right? Yeah. So, like, for example, we might go, well, the code today was the shit, let's have another one. Um, that's saying we're planning on having more events like that. Same with media strategy. Yeah. Uh, this refers to purely to physical media. Our communication is actually the social media.
Who is that? Yeah, how many is your number? Eighteen. Eighteen for is that two minutes? Yes. Okay. Motion pass. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, five point seven. Which is the way. Yep. Oh, okay. Five point seven. That's it. We're ready now. Yeah, I just want to say, so if you've got a CEO of a company 
Um, it's not necessarily the CEO has to give the company the direction, and I think Comstock is the same. I don't think it's necessarily the president's job to give direction, but it's everyone on the executive's team to work together. Um, and so I personally don't think it should be in the constitution. It might be expected of them, but it's not something you have to do. Can I ask, is that uh, direction? because it does give that um, grounds for removal if there's a recalcitrant officer that everyone's scratching their heads going, uh, is it really worth getting rid of them or not? What are the reasons? How bad can it be? Why should we get rid of them? Ah, so he's not, he's not doing anything, not providing any direction. Um, so it gives, gives a bit of clarification in terms of what makes it bad enough to remove someone. Yeah, I'll 
5543. They shall present the annual statement of accounts and the balance sheet for the preceding client entry to be ordered of each year at least two weeks before the annual general meeting. And shall present the audited statements and balance sheet at the annual general meeting. 5544. Should the treasurer be absent or ill or neglect or refuse to do anything to be done by them under these rules, the executive committee may appoint any member of the executive committee to act in this step. Any questions? Sorry, sorry, exactly what changed. Uh, just before I read out what the old rules, this basically was one giant chunk and we split it into the four sub clauses. Um, and the main, apart from splitting it, the change was to add in that clause about budgeting. Um, I'll read what the previous constitution states in 554. Um, treasurer. The treasurer shall receive all monies of the society and deposit them in the society's bank account, pay accounts, as directed by the executive committee. They shall keep records of receipts and payments as may be directed by the executive committee and present a statement of accounts to each regular meeting with the executive committee. They shall present the annual statement of accounts and balance sheet for the preceding financial year to the auditor each year at least two weeks before the annual general meeting and shall present the audited statements and balance sheet at the annual general meeting. Should the treasurer be absent or ill or neglect or refuse to do anything to be done by them under these rules, the executive committee may appoint any member of the executive committee to act in this way. So to summarize, it was splitting that joint chunk into four clauses um, and adding in the clause for the budget, which is 5542, the treasurer shall propose a budget at the beginning of the calendar year to be approved by the executive committee. Well, estimated income and expenses, including but not limited to events, competitions, capital purchases, and other expenses. Can I just quickly add, um, the reason why I wanted the budget clause in there is because the union requires, as part of the federation, that we have a budget for the next year. Now that the AGM has been changed to be in line with what the union expects, it might as well be formalised as a vote so they can't sound it in the constitution. So we can actually remain a club within the society. I would also like to add that the budget could be, be, be a good idea to find how much money we're going to spend on different things, uh, events, uh, competition, social events, etc. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing that I'd like to add is that the budget is not going to be in the budget for the year. Um, so this is so rather than having to, I guess, uh, allocate that as you go throughout the year, it's better to have that money on the side and up front um, and agree upon what the person. Um, can I make a clarification? Which is going to be doing the audit? Who is that all on your track? Probably the union, as yeah. they do every the union. The they union. were doing the ordering of the bomb. Yeah, they require a reconfiguration, which is uh, involves the uh, accounts and expenses that are going to be to each other. Okay. Yeah. Right, we're ready for a vote. Yeah. All in favour? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
detailed meetings. Would it be better to ask why we're not getting the numbers that are required by the current constitution rather than just lowering that number? How are we going to hold future executives accountable to not being required? Is that something we're going to have to Um, Yeah, also, if the board is not yet, the well, I guess we're going to. Um, we have to run another AGM, but we still can't make it yeah. to dissolve. Yeah, we can help. It's kind of so interesting. It's also.
sexual is in both the male and the female. So the way this uh, is going to work is we're going to nominate everyone. Everyone's nominated? Alright, so the nominations so far. <laughs> So the three nominations so far for our president. First one is uh, Carmen, when he has accepted, nominated by yours truly and seconded by Robin. Second one is Cody, who had to you decline. Another one. Uh, third one is Jacob, which was accepted, nominated by Tom Bozzik and seconded by Cody. Alright, are there any further nominations for President? Anyone at all? Jenny has been nominated, is there a second? No, second Second one, Sarah. I nominated Jack Beer. I nominated Jack Beer. Someone said. They're not members, I'm afraid. I nominated Jack Beer. Oh, there's a Jack Beer. It's not a member. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. So we have three nominees. Jenny's a piece of shit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give the mic to uh, Cody and Jake, no. to Carla oh, and Jacob, okay. and they can speak, and then they're going to leave the room, and then you guys can yeah, talk shit about them, and then you can vote. Because, wait, we're going to talk about Carla, I can go all the time. Alright, so, quick, like, let's say no more than a minute, preferably a while, let's go. Alright, um, Colin, I hope you've worked out by now. Uh, I've been running the site last year. Um, I feel like I've been progressing forward uh, without giving a good direction, um, given the. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, membership has doubled in the last year. Um, also going through rebranding, um, re rebranding some things over here. But um, yeah, given the turnout tonight, I think the club is uh, moving forward. Um, also, I have a lot of what uh, I do and I want to continue doing for the club. I don't quite think that I've finished uh, what I've started, uh, but ultimately I'd like to uh, uh, leave the club uh, later this year. Um, that's what I've decided to do with the UAG club. And yeah, have a bit of a stay with the product position for you. Thank you. Society for a couple of years now and on the executive for all of them. I've learned a lot in my time. I've seen a couple of different presidents and a couple of different directions, and I want to kind of bring forward the positive contributions that have been made by the previous exec that I've had notice of. But I also want to actually do something related to programming occasionally because I think that that's a part of the society that should be maintained. All right, the two candidates, please speak to me. Oh, 
So that was the next time. So we have three nominations for secretary. We have Cody, uh, nominated by Tom Bossy. Not seconded, do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Christine, that is. Uh, do you accept Cody? Cody, Cody, do you accept your nomination for secretary? Accepted. Then we have Krill in the corner there. Where is he? There he is. Uh, Nominated by Tom Bozzi. No, my bad. Nominated by myself. <laughs> second bit, do we have a second? By Robin. What is the picture? And accepted. And then thirdly, we have Nick Cabal, which was accepted, nominated by Colin Brooks, and seconded by Robin. Is Nick here tonight? Yep. Yep, excellent. You're all still running? All still interested in the role? Number um, six. Right. Not. <laughs> 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 so now it's Cody and Nick. So you guys speech. get to speech. Try to keep it to 30 seconds. I'll cut you off in a minute. Who wants to go first? You're standing up. Last year, as a first year rep, I also really like Proxoc and I'd like to um, help the club expand even further um, and do a lot of events this year. Both of um, definitely some bar tabs and parties and stuff, and also some programming competitions. I mean, at least maybe we do one a semester if we can. Two candidates, please leave the room. I wanted 
uh, this goes to Treasury because like when people are sending us money, it's essentially that's around the I'm pretty good at organising and paying close attention to detail. Uh, responsibility from the trust mm -hmm. and like all other uni students that have been driven. Also, a bit of a foodie, so I know where the good stuff is. Because we operate visually. Because like, I, I don't know the name. <laughs> so, the person who is representing his name is Robert. With an R. Cody's name is Cody. In case you forgot, of course. So, you can. Cody, I'm going to actually ask.
yeah, so the red list exists, but it currently is not to date, and uh, yeah, it also it doesn't reach a lot of members. Is
When did the eviction first get told and what reasons did they give? Uh, the reason is because they renovated that entire floor of building uh, 10 and so the three floors being renovated rather than actually seeing its uh, permanent construction and that's uh, how our uh, network connection got cut is because I guess all the buildings just were bringing cables out of the um, So yeah, we've been, we originally had a deadline um, but that got extended um, due to the office to us. Uh, they had been in space, they haven't been finished yet, so we had the end of extension. Um, we tried to find a new place and start like, people immediately. So, so this way we found out because uh, Harry and I were working during the whole of in the Crocs Opera, we were not on the board from one of the pressure managers. So, 
in the holidays. Yeah. They told you, oh, by the way, you're going. Yeah. What, like January or something? Uh, it would have been probably about a month ago. Um, and he said, uh, as a loan, decided to keep it secret. Um, uh, I thought it would be better to go with really you by um, and control it, uh, especially for most like, uh, especially for people like the team, to give points out to different people saying that they want to be and to sort of give an aid about the whole situation so we want to try and manage it as well.